Lesson 6.3b, Writing Two-Step Equations. We can write two-step equations to represent real-world problems by translating the words of the problem into numbers, variables, and operations. By writing an equation, we incorporate all the important parts of the problem into a compact form. So remember, when we're talking about operations, we're talking about addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. We use that with numbers and variables for our equation. Be careful to pay attention to the question being asked in a word problem. Our goal is to answer the question that is being asked. If information is given in weeks, yet the question asks about days, we'll need to convert that information into days. And if it's given in years, yet the question asks about months, we'll need to convert the information into months. A one-year subscription to a web service is $53. And there's a fee of $5 when we join, and the rest is paid monthly. Write an equation to represent the situation that will help us find how much we will pay per month. The variable in our equation will represent what we are trying to find, the monthly payment. So let's let m equal monthly payment. The one-time fee is $5. The fee charged for one year is going to be 12 times m for 12 times the monthly payment. We convert that one year to 12 months because it's asking about a monthly payment. The total cost for the year is $53. Now we have all our important information. We know we're looking for M, the monthly payment. We know that first fee is $5. We know one year is going to be 12M, 12 monthly payments. And we know our total is $53. We use the words in the problem to tie the words together and write an equation. We have this one-time joining fee of $5. We're going to add it to the 12 times monthly cost, which is our 12M, and we know the total is $53, so it's going to equal $53. Now, we can't combine the $5 and the 12M because they're unlike terms. If this said 5M plus 12M, we would be able to combine them to be 17M, but these are unlike terms, so we cannot combine them. So this equation will help us find the monthly fee. We have $5 plus 12M is equal to $53. We remove the $5 from each side of the equation, from each side of the equal sign. So if we have a positive $5 here and a negative $5, well, that's going to create a zero pair and eliminate this. And we're going to take away $5 from the 53 and get $48. Now we have 12M is equal to $48. Now we divide both sides by this coefficient 12. We have 12 times some number M is equal to $48. Now I know some of you could probably just do this in your head, but we're trying to show how to write these equations, so I'm using some easier numbers. We divide this side by 12, and we divide this side by 12. This has the same numerator and denominator, as a fraction, doesn't it? So this entire thing is just a 1, so we have 1M, but we don't have to write that 1. And $48 divided by 12 is $4. This isolates M to one side to show its value. We know it's $4 a month. Tala bought 15 cupcakes and a $2 brownie for $47. Write an equation to represent the situation that will help us find the cost per cupcake. So we're going to let C equal the cupcake and its cost. We have 15 times the cupcakes plus the cost of a brownie is going to equal the total. So we have 15C plus that $2 brownie is going to equal $47. We could solve this in two steps. We can take away the $2 from each side of the equal sign. That'll create a zero pair here because we have a plus $2 minus $2. Now we just have a 15C is equal to $45. We divide both sides by this coefficient 15. And on this side, we get the same numerator and denominator. So that whole thing is equal to 1 or 1C. And we don't write the 1. 
And here we have $45 divided by 15. That's going to tell us each cupcake costs $3. Here's another one. There are 16 boxes of blue markers and four red markers. For a total of 196 markers, how many blue markers are in each box? So pay attention, we have 16 boxes of blue markers, but then there's only four red markers. They're not boxes, it's just four red markers. So how many blue markers are in each box? We're gonna let B equal blue for blue markers. We have 16 boxes of blue markers, so we're gonna have 16 B, 16 times however are many in the box, plus the four red markers, so we have a plus four, and it's gonna equal the total number of markers, the 196. We can solve this in two steps. We have 16B plus four is equal to 196. We can get rid of this plus four by doing minus four on each side of the equal sign. What we're doing is adding a negative four. We have plus four and minus four, that creates a zero pair and eliminates it. And we have minus four on this side that gives us 192. Now we have 16B is equal to 192. We divide both sides by this coefficient 16, which is gonna make this have the same numerator and denominator, so it's equal to one, we have one B. On this side, we have 192 divided by 16. We can do a little long division on the side, and we get that B is equal to 12. We know that each box of blue markers holds 12. Let's try this one. It's a little bit different. Emma paid $34.50 for five yards of fabric after using a $3 coupon. How much did the fabric cost per yard? So we're gonna let C equal cost per yard. We also could have used Y for yard or F for fabric, but let's try using C for cost per yard. So we have our total, it's $34.50, and it's gonna equal five yards of fabric, so we have five times C, the cost of the yards, and we need to subtract the coupon amount. This is after she used the coupon, so we're going to do minus $3. When we use a coupon, we're taking off money, aren't we? So we can solve this in two steps. We have a $3 coupon that we're going to need to add back on to the $34.50. The reason we're doing that is we can't find the price of the yard of fabric for one yard until we put this coupon back on and then divide it by five. That'll give us the true value of the five yards of fabric. We need to add that $3 coupon back on. So on this side, we have $34.50 plus $3. That's gonna give us $37.50. And on this side, we add the $3 to the minus $3, that's gonna create a zero pair and eliminate it. So now we're just left with $37.50 is equal to 5C. Now notice that our total is on this side and our variable and coefficient are on this side. Doesn't matter, we can still isolate the variable to find its value. We have a five for our coefficient, so we're gonna divide each side by five. That's gonna give us the same numerator and denominator here as a fraction, and it's gonna make it a one. So we have one C, and $37.50 divided by five is $7.50. That tells us each yard of fabric is $7.50. So for this problem, we needed to add that $3 coupon back on to get the total for the five yards. We can use any letter of the alphabet to represent the unknown amount. Using any letter as our variable, if we are finding apples, we can use A for apples. If it's pumpkins, we can use P for pumpkins, or Y for years, or D for dogs. This will help us stay focused on what we're looking for. We don't usually use the letter O or a lowercase l because they might be confused as a zero or a one. N, X, and Y are typically used. You're gonna see N, X, and Y used a lot. 
Now, we can use a lowercase l if we write it in script. You're going to see this in algebra. You're going to see a script lowercase l. And I know some European students are very used to writing a zero with a line through it like that. And we still would not typically use a letter O for a variable. We're finished with part B. We're going to move on to part C, writing a verbal description of a two-step equation. So as I said at the end of the last video, the whole goal here is to isolate that variable to one side of the equation so that we can find its value. We use inverse operations to do it. Have a great day. Join me for the next lesson. Bye.